How is AWS uh, or other hyperscalers, for that matter, going to make up for that? What kind of penalties can be paid? Um, you know, how can they um, how can they make these businesses whole? And a lot of that comes down to the contract, which is which defines the SLA, the service level agreements. Look at these because they're very important, and many of them are written one sided toward the hyperscalers. So, in other words, SLAs are you know typically um, you know set up so it's in the favor of the people who had an outage this week, not necessarily you who has a smaller business. So read them, understand them, and if you have to, go renegotiate them. And next, consulting firms must step up. So big consulting firms, I think, have a responsibility to their clients around things like this. Stop sugarcoating risks for fear of upsetting powerful cloud partners. That's what I'm seeing in the space right now. Nobody talked this week. You didn't hear from the big cloud, cloud providers. You know, some sort of advice to their clients around this outage event and what they need to do and what they need to think about. Now, now, they may have had private discussions, by the way, so we don't know about those, but it would have been nice, I think, if they put together you know, some sort of advisory around how we should think or rethink using these hyperscalers, but no one did because their relationships and contracts and things like that you know, with these hyperscalers. And I guarantee you within all the large consulting firms, as soon as this outage occurred, uh, the uh, PR marketing team, uh, you know, corporate comms team sent out a note that told everybody not to talk to the press and what have you, what have you. And that's because of the relationships that we have with some of these folks. And I think that's going to be a conflict of interest in many cases.